I'll be right back. I told y'all them girls is not gonna give me no damn wrinkles. Oh, yes, ma'am! We got to get into some things. Let's go get them. Hey Jordan, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm good. <laughs> uh, let, so let's go ahead and start. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, um, I'm Jordan Nizel. Um, I was a dancing doll for four years. For some odd reason, it feels like five. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I took that year off, it feel like it still feels like five because I've been in college for five years now. Right. Um. I am a senior nursing student. I graduate May 15th. Yes, Yay. Yes, <laughs> um, what else? I'm from Mobile, Alabama. I'm 22 years old. I know a lot of people got mixed up this year, <laughs> but I'm 22. Um, what else? I'm a Taurus, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah. so prior to you um, becoming a dancing doll, what other dance experiences did you have? Um, I danced in high school. Uh, I danced at LaFleur High School in Mobile, Alabama. And I also danced for Dance 101 um, Company. Um, she's a black owner. And she really, she really was like the bomb. Like, yeah. that ex I would say my experience in a studio was way more helpful for me becoming a doll than my experience in front of a band actually because technique is such a big deal with right. doll yes. and that's why I did like yes I started in high school but it wasn't like a, <clears throat> a easy journey oh, wow. okay sorry oh no it's fine <laughs> okay go ahead but yeah it wasn't like an easy journey so yeah that's my dance experience before doll <laughs> okay so I know that you went to the floor and the floor is more so like a sting it style so, being that it was a sting style, what made you actually want to be a dancing doll? Well, actually, before I went to LaFleur, I wanted to be a dancing doll. Okay. Um, my eighth grade year in middle school, I was actually living in Houston at the time. A lot of people don't know that. I went to a middle school called Paul Revere in Houston, and my mom was like, okay, we're about to move back. And she was just like, if you want to try out for cheerleading when you go to high school, that's fine. So I was like, okay, cheerleading. I like that. Right. So actually, I went online, I went on YouTube, and I looked up the cheerleaders for the floor. I watched them, and then I came across a dance girl video, and mm -hmm. I watched that, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> I like this. Yeah. And then the very first doll video I ever came by was um, Power, okay. when DT was captain. Oh, yeah. And I was so, the French cut, Sierra Cole, like, oh, my gosh, yes. Casey Griggs. I was like, yeah this is what I want to do. So I went to school. I went to high school. I had my experience with dance and, um, I did look at multiple colleges, not just, not even just HBCUs because I wasn't sure what exactly I wanted to go to school for. Right. And then when I found out that Southern had a nursing program. I was so, I was like, I gotta go to Southern. I gotta work for this. I actually did not dance my last year in high school. Mm hmm on the dance team because I wanted to focus on my technique. Yeah. I spent all my time in the studio. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I that's, put in the work. <laughs> that's good. So, how was it adjusting to the doll style? Um, I'm a, like, okay, I would say this. I'm a, I'm a fast learner, so the choreography wasn't the issue. It was definitely the style. Right. Um, I came in with m more energy than any video can show for a doll i came in with way more energy than that wow. and you know kayla being kayla she's not she taught me how to have a happy medium okay. like her and connor basically connor used to oh well danielle link for two like they used to always tell me like you're a great dancer but you have to find your happy medium right and so i didn't take that very well at first to be honest like as well, how old was I when I came to college? Like eighteen. Mm -hmm. I didn't take that well. I didn't understand it. I thought that when you dance, you're supposed to give your all, move right. your entire body, and all that good stuff. And um, 
yeah so it was a it was a progress like I had to start off just being me finding a groove and then I had to focus on toning it down to fit in with the team like because that's what to make it's it about. to make it fit to make it right you know, fit. I had to find myself and then also find myself as a dog right. like and I honestly feel like I've look different every year yeah. on the team. Like, and it's not anything I did on purpose. I think that my dance style matched my personality at the time. My crab year, I was a little bit, I felt like that was my softest, most calm year because, I mean, I was scared. Like, yeah. I'm like, if there's something wrong, it's over. It's over. But um, then my second year, I was a fireball. Like, that was the most fireball year I ever had because I built my confidence and I felt like well, I can be myself now. Right. And my third year, I was, like, a little bit more mature. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to tone it down but not lose my personality. Right. And, of course, I didn't do that next year. But then my last year, um, I felt like, I'm trying to see what was my mindset my last year. My last year, it was very hard for me to adjust without having my crab sisters. We was going to get to that. Okay. So, yeah, my last year, my style was um, way more toned down mm -hmm. because I didn't want to come through with the mindset. I didn't want anybody to think that I was trying to take the younger girl shine right. or the captain shine. I was really coming back to finish what I started. And get my jacket and just have that closure that I felt like I needed to move forward with my life. And I'm grateful for the experience. But my last year wasn't necessarily about me dancing. Because I know I can do that. No. I didn't want to be the person wanting all the attention. Because I really didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that that's kind of obvious. I was more so... That was the most laid back season I ever had. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. So, how would you compare your first audition to your last audition for the dolls? Um, I would say my last audition was probably my most fire audition ever. <laughs> my first audition, my hair was a hot mess. Oh, <laughs> but, I mean, I was always a very, I was always a dancer that had a lot of personality. Mm -hmm. Um, So, that was never, like, I feel like that's what got me on the team. Right. Me being me, like, I'm very big on being yourself. Like, you see me right now, my natural hair, no makeup on, like, because that's me on the regular. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to come on here and, you know, try to be something that right. I'm not. Exactly. Like, And I feel like that's what got me on the team my first year. My second year, I'm like, okay, I'm a dog. I got this. I have to style my second year. My third year, you know, I don't really even remember my audition for my third year, but I know my choreo was like hard yes. <laughs> I never posted I never recorded it but it was hard and then my last year I felt like I had to oh wait I tried on five years oh, I keep really? forgetting I auditioned five years of course I made it all five years because you have to think about it I made it in the 2018 year oh, but yeah, then yeah. I, yeah we all know what happened there's no point of you know dragging on negativity or whatever right. but um I made it five years but I feel like my last year I felt like I had something to prove like I felt like I left that's on me like I made that decision so I felt like I had to come in and go harder than everybody because I had to prove I really want to be on a team for genuine purposes right. like you know so I came I worked hard again you know and I came with it so I, I don't know it's a very auditions is a very um intense yeah. vibe but I would say um, it wasn't as intense for me my last year because I felt like I did it so many times. And I felt like if God wants me here, I'm going to make it. And right. if he doesn't want me here, then I have to accept that and move forward. Right. Like, I felt like my maturity level is what changed my experience at auditions. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Auditions is intense, though. Yeah. I can say that. It's intense and it's not a joke. It's not something you just go in barely prepared for. You go in prepared. I'm all for preparation. I'm a person who believes in working hard. Like, if anybody knows me, they know Jordan probably somewhere working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, what was your most memorable moment your crab year? OMG. 
<laughs> that honestly a hard question because I can say that my crab year was probably my favorite year on the team and not you know because of any certain circumstances just because I had all my crab sisters my captain and my co-captain Connor is basically my big sister like it's just I felt so much love that mm-hmm. year and I feel like that is that was the core of our season like we actually had love for each other That's and good. Okay, but to answer your question, because I talk too much sometimes. <laughs> no, you fine. Stop. <laughs> um, my most memorable moment of my crab year, I would have to say, mm, this is this is pretty odd, but my most memorable moment is the very beginning. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Throughout the season, a lot happened, and it was kind of sort of a blur. Yeah. But. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a give two answers to this question. One, my most memorable moment is the very beginning when we first started and I first walked in the room and it was me and my, we were there. We didn't, we barely knew each other. And then Kayla walked in and in my head, I was losing it. Wow. But on the outside, I'm like, you know, Call <laughs> so you're cool, Jordan. <laughs> you know, you're on the team now, so you can't act like you're not on the team. But meeting Kayla, Danielle Stamper, Danielle Linkford, Connor, Maya, meeting them for the first time was a moment I'll never forget because you spend so much time watching them, right. admiring them to the point where when I saw them, it was just like, this can't be real. Right. And my second most memorable moment is the Alabama State game. <laughs> Which because one? Which one? My crab year. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. So that's when we were at State. And um, that was Kayla's first week back, and Dan- Danny's, and I was close to my hometown. Like I wasn't in my hometown, but a lot of my friends and family came to that game because it was so close. And it was just so crazy. Like it just felt like a dream come true. That game. Like I was just genuinely happy that game. That's good. That's good. But yeah. So let me ask you this: How was it crabbing under the legendary KP? Oh, let's see. <laughs> I can say this. She is everything she's hyped up to be. Oh, like, oh, yeah. she's amazing. Like, she was an amazing captain. She taught us so much. Like, 15 wouldn't be 15 without Kayla. Right. Like, it's just no way around it. Of course, you know, we had our big sisters. We had our co-captain, Danny. But it's just like, Kayla, she's just like will always have a place in all of our hearts because she was just a good person, a good captain, and she never had the idea of, I want to be better than my team. She wanted her team to be, she wanted the whole team to look good. She was pretty hard on us, though. I could say that much, but how could have we been this good of dancers if she wasn't as hard on us as she was? It it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, so I would say crabbing on a Kayla was amazing and it's it's what you would expect it to be like i feel like everybody who genuinely knows kayla has good things to say about her and it's all true she's really an amazing person very selfless and just a natural leader that's good so what is something that i know you said that um you you already pretty much said that you've learned some things from k from kp what else have you learned from kp let's see she used to always tell us, do your stuff, like, all, 100%. Like, she had the idea of, if you do your stuff, rather you make the team the next year or not, rather you get treated right or not, you can always say you did your your part. She used to always say, do your stuff. She used to also tell us, water off a of duck's back. And what that means is... Some things you don't have to react to. Some mm-hmm. things people are going to say to you or say about you. You just got to let that go. Like, just let it go. And I felt like that was one major thing for me to learn because I wear my feelings on my sleeve because I feel like I'm such a good person. I don't talk about people in a negative way. And, you know, I try to be as supportive as possible. But to hear, like, when somebody has said something negative about you – and, you know, no one really knows what you're dealing with behind closed doors. 
I would have to say I had to really learn water off the duck's back because, you know, me being in the position that I was in with everything that happened, people who don't personally know me may assume that I'm just like the devil or something. Like right. I'm a brat, I'm spoiled. You know, I'm not spoiled at all. I work so hard. But I had to learn that those people don't know you like you know you. Right. So you just have to let them say what they're going to say and keep on doing you. Keep on being who you are because I know for a fact that I'm a good person. And that's hard for me because I expect me out of other people. Exactly. And it, it's so hard because it's like I always want to say something. I want to stand up for people. Like even if I see somebody talking about one of my sisters on the team or something, I want to say something, but I had to learn water off a duck's back. People going to talk regardless. Exactly. So it's like that lesson KP taught us is one that I keep with me because I'm going into nursing during this time with Corona, COVID-19. Yeah. I know that I have to go in with a strong mind. Like, yeah. so I got you. So throughout your years, who was your inspiration as a as a dog like who inspired you the most um Kayla Pittman Danielle Lingford inspired me so much because she was spicy too yeah, you know definitely she was definitely <laughs> and spicy. so I just admired her so much um Maya oh my gosh I love Maya I love her <laughs> um who else inspired? Well, some of the older dolls, Davy Dumars. Mm -hmm. I just loved her because she was short and she was sassy. And just her personality is what I aspire to be like. Like, she's so calm and just, she just has it together. Yes. Like, and I love that. Yes. I literally love women like that. So, Sierra Cole, of course. Yes. Like, she's top, top five, <laughs> you know. So, but the reason why it's easy for me to say Kayla and, like, Daniel Lingford, because I actually know them a little bit more than I know Sierra and Dave Beef. But Sierra and Dave Beef are, like, those role models for me, like, that really inspired me to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. But I would say Kayla and Daniel Lingford and Connor, I would say they taught me a lot because they actually know me a little bit more personally. Right. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. How was it... Um, having the opportunity to um, get in that captain position while um, Danny was graduating? It was stressful um, because, you know, most of the time when you are announced captain, you know before everybody else. Right. Um, people don't know that, though, but usually captains know before everybody else know. And um, you have a little bit more time to prepare, you know, and you get to bring your vision to the table. Right. But I never brought my vision to the table because I never had the chance. Right. You know, so that spring semester wasn't me showing, like, it was showing how the capabilities I had to be a leader, even behind closed doors. Because mm -hmm. people don't really know what goes on behind closed doors when you're put into that position. Right. Um, so um, I felt like that year wasn't. Like, the spring semester was a continuation of Danny's year. Right. And me being, you know, the person I am, I respected her as captain. And I didn't want to completely change everything just in the same year, basically, because right. it's not a different year. It's the same school year. Mm -hmm. So it was more so me continuing her vision. Right. But I never got a chance to bring my vision to life because, of course, what happened, which, you know, it's okay. Um, I I feel like that is what was the hardest thing for me to accept. Yeah. It is um me not being able to have a chance. Like, right. you know, I feel like it's very hurtful when you feel like you're not worth it right. or you're not enough. It's just very hurtful. And I feel like anybody would have felt how I felt. And I and I feel like other people not as mentally strong as me would have handled it much worse than I did. Like right. I kinda sort of took it. Like, because I actually knew way before other people knew, like, when it happened. Mm -hmm. But I, I really just didn't understand why, because no one ever talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. But that semester, like, coming in right after Danny, it was a lot of pressure on me, because I know that Danny was a great captain, so it was like I needed to 
so that I have studied, I have learned, and I have, I'm have i ready to put forth the effort to give that same momentum that Danny came in with right. and that she left with also. So it was a great experience. I'm grateful for it because I'm just happy that I get to see what my potential, because that wasn't even the full me right. yet. I just, you know... He didn't, Mr. Hammer didn't even tell me like that I would be leading until like the last minute. Oh, like, wow. we had first started practicing. Like, we literally came to practice and we were all looking at each other like, So, Ooh. Danny is here. <laughs> hey, y'all. And so I just took the initiative. I stepped up. And then after that, that's when he was like, Okay, you'll be leading this semester. And so I was just like, All right, y'all. Y'all ready? Like, you know, <laughs> I, I had the mindset of I'm ready, you know, but I also had the mindset. At that moment, I didn't have the mindset that I know that I'm captain. Right. So I was very humble about it. But what made the whole transition so hurtful is because by then, I did know. Like, I was told that. So And then everything changed. So it was just, like, hard to process for right. me. But that semester was a great, was an amazing semester. And I'm so grateful that God gave me that opportunity because... At least I had something. Right, exactly. You know? At least you had some type of experience. I didn't get to yeah. show me and my creativity and, you know, but that's okay because everything happens for a reason. And I'm proud of the 2018 team for what they did because they still did amazing. So it's okay. That's how I feel now. I'm content with my experience because I know that if I did have a chance, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm content with the fact that at least I know like what I'm capable of, even right. if others didn't know. So it's okay. And you get you get to look back and you get to see like how it was back then, and you know reminisce. So yeah, exactly. I enjoy. Sometimes I can't. I'm not, I don't think I'm really really ready yet to watch mm-hmm. those videos. So it's actually kind of hard. But sometimes I have it in me to watch the videos, and I. I'm always very proud of myself because the time that I had to Mm -hmm. like teach those strut-ins and stuff, like literally wasn't nearly as long as you have when you're getting ready for a full season. So I just kind of sort of worked with the time that I had and I felt like the results, I was like, wow, (laughs) like this can't be real. You did really good. (laughs) Thank you so much. But, so, yeah, at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason, and I'm grateful for everything that happened and how it happened. And I'm proud of the 2018 team. So, that's so, it. So, um, did you help mold any of the new girls, like, as far as, like, not Ariel and Cam, but more so, like, Lindsay or um, uh, Ariana? Well, the way it works on the team um, is we all have an input. Right. You know, like, when they're practicing – and we see them do something, then we'll say something. So I would say I have helped, but I won't take the credit for their growth. That's how I put it, because I wasn't their captain, and I'm never a type of person to step on people's toes. Like, I I play my role. Like, my role is a member on the Mm -hmm. team, so that's how I'm going to act. But if I, you know, Ariana was on the same side as me. So clearly when we're dancing in the mirror, I see her do something of course i'm going to say hey why don't you try it like this because i think that you know it'll look better and i feel like she'll probably take it in you know you could choose whether you want to take someone's advice or not so Mm -hmm. of course i've given them corrections before but i won't take credit for their growth because i'm pretty sure that captain spent more time with them than i did so yeah okay so what was the hardest part about being a dancing dog um, managing nursing school mm. with Dancing Doll. Yeah. This is how it was. So, Dancing Doll, very demanding. Can't miss performances like that. You know, can't miss practice. Nursing school, they don't want you to work. They don't mm. want you to do extracurricular activities. They want you to do nursing and nursing only. So, it was very hard balancing. So, I would say... Me taking 2018 off was probably beneficial for me with school. I don't know if I would be this far in school right now. (laughs) So, and even this past semester, I was in my senior year of nursing school and doing dog, and I was stressed out, Mm. so stressed, because with nursing, it's a lot of content, 
in way little time, and then the tests are hard. The questions, mm. you can get all four of the right answer, but you have to choose which one is the most right. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just, you know, it's just a lot. It was a lot, and I had to do a lot of schoolwork by myself. Normally, students in nursing school um, have study groups. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, we're going to talk this out. You know, if you miss something, I might know it, and I can help you out. I didn't really have that my senior year. I had a study group before. But they graduated now. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like I'm by myself, studying by myself, because the time that I study is the time that everybody else is asleep. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why, you know, we're doing right. this so late. I'm so used to being up at night studying. After practice, good night, y'all, <laughs> but I'm still up. Right. You know, it was hard. So I would say the hardest part about being a dancing doll was balancing nursing school and dog like it's not easy like I had to make a lot of sacrifices people are still mad at me to this day mm. for the sacrifices that I had to make because I put too much on my plate right so and I'm the type of person I give a hundred or I give nothing at all and that comes off very bad sometimes but being a perfectionist that's how I am so it's like I couldn't give 100% to everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to narrow it down and choose nursing school is always first. Right. Right. <laughs> and my education is first because I have plans, you know, that I don't really talk about that it's going to be coming up in the future. But my main goal is to finish nursing school first. And all those other plans that I have will mm -hmm. come into fruition. And you everybody will see. You get to tell them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what was your favorite uniform? Any French cut uniform. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who knows me, like, you know, and we actually talk about doll a little bit, knows Jordan Ezel loves French cut. Yeah. Like, I think that the reason why I love French cut is because it just gives you that grown woman feel. Yes, and not only that, as a dancer, the way it makes your legs look mm -hmm. longer yeah. and your hips just look like your it's stomach like looks slimmer. Yeah. It's just perfect. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like French cut is so, like, when I think of doll, I, I think of the 90s. Of course, that's not where doll started. Of course, there's more to doll than the 90s. But I love them because they had so much style. And, mm -hmm. oh, I just love the 90s era. And when they wore that traditional uniform with Ooh. that French cut. Yes. I was sold. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I so, love traditional. Any French cut. Yes, yes, I love traditional too, of course. But any French cut, though, even the recent ones, I love French cut. Any French cut one piece mm -hmm. is my favorite. Yeah. So, <clears throat> throughout your four years as a, a dancing doll, what game was it that you just said, oh, okay, I have to come with it, this game? Throughout all my years? Yeah. I Ooh, have to come hard. with it. Like, I have to choose one game out of all years, or just typically this is a game? Typically, yeah. You, you, typically. Okay. Um, typically, J-State. And not just because it's J-State, just because the height that, you know, people on the outside make it up to be. It's right. so many people that's there, so it's like, I got to come with my A game, this game. Yeah. Bayou Classic, because it's just like it's my last one. It's always so much with Bayou Classic, though. Most of the time, I'm tired as crap at Bayou Classic, because... Mm -hmm. I'm still doing schoolwork. We still have finals after Bayou Classic, right. and we're practicing so much. Bayou Classic, I'm usually tired, but that field show for Bayou Classic Ooh. is the one where I feel like I got to This is the last one. <laughs> so if you look at any Bayou Classic field show and you spot me, just know I'm giving it all I got because right. it's the last one. Right. <laughs> and what else? Um, I felt like the very first the very first game, I always try to do my best. I don't normally do too much the first game because I'm trying to get back into the groove of things, but the first game, J-State and Bayou Classic, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Homecoming. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Oh, yes. Homecoming. Yes. Because when your favorite is sitting right there in them stands, okay. you like, yeah, I got to impress my favorite dog. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> Homecoming, for sure. Right. Okay, that was it. <laughs> so, um, what was your logic behind your um, strut in 2018 going into the, uh, I think it was the Battle of the Band. Oh, when we had on Jaguar? Yeah. Um, like, what was my logic when I was making like, it what? up or right, during? Exactly. Like, making oh, it up. Oh, okay. Um, 
So actually, those were made up for parade season. Okay. Actually. So my logic behind it was, you know, I actually talked to Taylor about it. She actually, one of them is some of the choreography is actually hers. Oh. I don't like the ending, like she ended it. Um, but my logic behind it was I wanted to keep the same momentum for mm-hmm. spring semester as we have for fall semester. Because right. usually, like, spring semester is a semester where the performances get a little bit boring, right. and it's just like, I don't know. But in my mind, I was just like, all or nothing, right. you know? So I was like, it's spring, but this is still Dawes. You know, I want us to look good. And so I was just like, What's the way that I can keep the momentum going? 2017 was a year of creativity, right. clearly. So to keep that momentum going, I was just like, why don't we do new struts rather than new catch-ons? We have enough new catch-ons for now. And I was just like, I don't want to put too much on the team. You know, we're learning all this new content. So I was just like, struts is the way to go because we have parades. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, and when we got to the Battle of the Bands, in my head, I was just like, should I do it? No, no, no. You know that little video on Twitter when the girl, she's just like, yes. She's like, no, no, no. And she's like, well. Oh, she's like, no, no, no. I know but, exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> that's how I was on the bus, just sitting there. Just like, should I do it? And then once they play Black and Blues, I was just like, I'm doing it. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Because let me I tell you, wanted... let me tell you, every time I make a video and it's struts or it's um, parades or anything, everybody... Oh my God! I you gotta use Jordan. You have to use Jordan. Oh my God! Please. I'm like, okay. I did it about three times already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my mindset was literally just to keep the same momentum the entire year. Right. And you know, I'm happy that I was able to do that. Whoop whoop. Yeah. So <laughs> let me ask you this: What? How did you come up with Shirley T, the alter ego? Well, actually, I didn't come up with the name. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the name I had since my freshman year, but the way I used it is okay. The way the name was explained to me was not was because of my hair. I had tight, tight pink curls mm-hmm. my first year, and also like I had so much personality when I danced. Mm-hmm. Like so, it was just like perfect for me (laughs) and honestly the ending the t stands actually stands for something else but i'm just not gonna go too deep into that (laughs) but it has something to do with my personality but um i just took that and going into my second year i was just like honestly like this is me like surely like when i'm dancing i'm spicy i i'm you know i have personality i was just like you know what I'm not just Jordan when I dance. Because, baby, let me tell you something. I'm early. <laughs> the details is just... The crazy part is, the re- the real thing is, Shirley is not just for dance, though. Like, it's the fact that I have more than one personality. Oh, wow. And you don't know who you're going to get that day. You might right. get Shirley, and you might get Jordan. Jordan <laughs> is the one you want, though. Right. <laughs> not Shirley. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, how does it feel being compared to the legendary Sierra Cole? Being the fact that she was my favorite doll before I became a doll, my, when I became a doll, my favorites began to, I, I had too many favorites. Like, I can't just say I have one favorite doll anymore because I have so much respect for all of them. Mm-hmm. But when I was first compared to her by actual dolls, mm. I was like, this can't be real. Right. Like, <laughs> Like, I just loved her so much. I just loved the fact that she used her entire body to dance and she does not leave out anything. Right. And I felt like that's what I wanted to do when I was a doll. Like, I personally don't feel like I dance exactly like her anymore. Mm-hmm. I feel like my style kind of sort of changed a little bit because I had so much of Kayla in me, too. So it was just like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I have my own little way of doing things because I love Sierra so much. I looked up to her. So I came in dancing like I wanted dance like her then I had Kayla tone that down so it was like but to be compared to her was very I don't know it was it was weird actually because how am I compared to such a legend right right (laughs) that's how it was but I still appreciate it because it actually gave me the confidence and the boost to you know keep that personality going so yeah so what was going through your mind of uh, fall of 2018 
and you know you had to step away from the dolls like and you, I mean you you had already made the team and everything so what was going through your mind what made you just not necessarily what was your feeling basically I, I get what you're saying yeah. pain yeah if anybody wants to know pain hurt um I did not know how to react I did not know how to feel um and it wasn't just about me you know I felt some type of way from my crab sisters too because I wasn't, you know, if you didn't like me, somebody from 15, like, you know, yeah. but pain. Yeah. I stepped away because I didn't know what to do or how to feel, or how to react. And it was just like, when something is hurting you, you want to move away from it. Right. Naturally. Like, if you put your hand on a hot stove, naturally your hand is going to jerk back. Exactly. Like, ooh, that hurts. I got to move away. So that's how I felt. I was hurt. And I felt like... Only a few people really, truly understood my pain. Most people felt like, oh, she just being dramatic. Like, you know, she wrong. And I understand how they could think that when they don't know me personally or didn't personally have a conversation with me during the time. Mm -hmm. But people who knew me probably could see how hurt I was. Because I just felt like, dang. <laughs> like, it's a slap in the face. Like It's a slap in yeah. the face. But I just didn't like the way the fans of Dawes went about it. Like, you know, I understand what happened to me, but don't take it out on the wrong person. Right. That was my biggest thing. I was not condoning it, and I did not agree with it. <clears throat> and I actually felt bad for it. <laughs> I felt like it was one of the reasons I wanted to go back, because I didn't know how they were going to spend things this yeah. year, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But I would say I was hurt, and I just wanted to wake up and wish that it was a dream. And I felt like nobody could really understand my pain. Right. But I didn't like the fact that they felt they had to put somebody else through pain and say hurtful things just because I was going through it. I can go through pain and pull through, but I don't need anybody to do things to people or say things about people that I wouldn't even say or do. Right. Exactly. That was the biggest thing for me. Like, I was hurt. It was hard. And I went through a lot of things mentally to bring myself back to being who I am, confidence-wise, everything. Like, people don't think about that. Like, yeah, you know, like, you don't know what I went through mentally during that time because I tried to keep it away from social media as much as I could. And then when I did come to social media, I was more so being supportive. Right. Like... And people tried to spin that, too. So I was just like, you know what? The best thing for me to do is to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> shut up, go through my pain by myself, and move forward. Yeah. So that's what I did. <laughs> so what was your motivation coming back to the dolls? Um, going out the right way. Yeah. Doing it the right way. Showing that I can still be hurt and still do what I have to do. I was still hurt that season, and it had nothing. To, it's not because I expected anything, because I really didn't, mm -hmm. clearly. Like, that's not even realistic. It was more so I needed that closure. I needed to go back, go through what God wanted me to go through, right. being that hurt every day, not even just because of what happened, but being without my craft sisters, you know, it was just hard. Yeah. It was a very hard year for me mentally, and I feel like it showed, but I feel like people misunderstand how I feel a lot, mm -hmm. but it's like a lot of times I was just hurting that mm -hmm. year, but it's like I couldn't pity myself. I couldn't play victim because I decided to go back. Nobody put a gun to my head and said, Jordan, go back. Right. <laughs> I put myself through that pain so I could move forward feeling free, feeling like I did this the right way. I did my part, and now I can finally let it go. Right. So that was my mindset of going back. I had a positive outlook on it. And then when I got there, it was harder than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> like when I was preparing, I was just like, yeah, I know I could do this. I got this, you know. And then when I got there, I was like, oh, crap. Right. <laughs> I think I'm going to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my mindset was just doing it the right way. Yeah. Correcting my wrongs and doing it the right way and letting it go. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Being that you came back for 2019, what was the hardest 
change that you had to um, just just grasp? Hmm. Like you, like did you encounter any changes that you had to like? Yeah, but it had nothing to do with dance. I can say that. Of course, I had to kind of sort of change my style a little bit, mm-hmm. but that's okay. That's nothing. Like you know, as a dancer, you know, it's like okay. Of course, I had to learn all of the 2018 catch ons. I learned all of that well before the first game even came. Mm-hmm. So it, that wasn't really the issue. The issue was the changes behind closed doors, which I won't really go too deep into because I don't think that that's appropriate. Yeah. But I can say it was more so mental changes behind closed doors rather than changes in front of the camera. Right. But I would say one major change is me becoming a grown woman. Now, I have a grown woman body now. <laughs> and I had to get used to seeing that on camera. Right. I did not like it. Oh, my gosh. I can I can barely watch videos because I just hated my body my last season. Like, And the crazy thing is I work so hard. Like, I work out. Mm-hmm. I don't really eat certain foods. Like, I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork. Mm-hmm. I don't eat sweets. So, it's just always confusing to me. Like, where did the weight come from? But I just realized, like, you're grown, Jordan. <laughs> You're grown. not that same little girl, yeah. you know? And it's okay to be grown. I just have to remind myself that every single day, like, you're grown. Right. So be that. And so <laughs> I had to really work on that confidence, too. Oh, and when we wore that blue uniform, the two-piece, oh. Uh, oh, I was so nervous. I was just like, I just know I look like a fat bitch. No, you did <laughs> But no. it's okay, though. No. And, you know, I've seen, you know, instances where people have said something about my weight, which is very hurtful because it's just like, as a woman, it's very hard as a woman, like, who, you know, deals with, you know, different insecurities and stuff behind closed doors anyways. It's very hurtful, like, you know, when you literally never say anything bad about other people and you just stay to yourself and then next thing you know, you see people saying all these negative things about you. It's, it's so hurtful. Right. But... You know, I got to start wearing my feelings on my sleeve. Right. People are going to say negative, negative things, and I'm learning that every single day. Just let them. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so what was a major difference in administration going from, you know, DT to now you have Miss Akai? Like, how, what was the difference? I would say, oh, the things I want to say. I'd rather pass this question. Okay. I got you. That's a very hard question for me because, you know, the truth hurts. And yeah. if I say what I really want to say, I'm going to be the bad guy. Um, so I'd rather pass that question. I'll just say that. I'll just pass that question. I got you. you know, and it's not that I have anything negative to say about anybody. I just rather keep it clean, you know? Yeah. So but it were major changes, though. Major changes. Yeah. So. If you were to, hypothetically speaking, if you were to go your whole four years consecutively um, and you got captain your last year, what would you have brought to the t- to the table? I feel like I never really want to say what I would have brought to the table, but I can really say that I'm a person who doesn't just make moves without talking to the team. I feel like one major thing I would have brought to the table is more so things that matters behind closed doors rather than in front of the cameras. Like, yeah, you know, really anybody on the team can lead catch-ons, technically. Even the new girls, they can get up front and kill some catch-ons too Mm -hmm. because that's how we train. Like, you know, that's what we do behind closed doors. We all practice that. But I feel like I would have been a major advocate for my team like, you know, like, what do y'all want? What do y'all want to do? Like, what ideas do you have? What concerns do you have that you think I need to talk to the band director about? Like, yeah. I feel like I'm an advocate, but that can come off very wrong sometimes to, like, the people who are over the captain. Because it can make you seem like you're rebellious and you're just against them. But really, really, you just want people to see things from other people's point of view and just not their own. And I feel like what I would have brought to the table is I would have been a major advocate. I would have been big on creativity without losing tradition. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like one thing about 2017, I would say, I feel like we started to move a little too far away from tradition, but I don't feel like we had to take 10 steps back to 
still feel like dolls. Like, you know, I feel like I would have found a, a balance yeah. for being creative, being evolving, and still not losing who we were as fabulous dancing dolls. I feel like I would have brought that to the table. Um, because as far as choreography and, you know, catch-ons and stuff, that's that's a given. Yeah. Like, you know, any anybody can do that because you don't do that alone as a captain. You yeah. do that as a team. Yeah. Like, so, of course, catch-ons and field shows would have been a great thing. I love choreography, clearly. So, but you know one thing, I love 2018 field shows. Oh, oh. <laughs> For sure, I loved it. Yes. But, you know, I feel like that's also a team effort because the whole team brings in choreography. Right. So I feel like the vibe of the team, you know, plays a big role in that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's why I feel like I would never say, oh, I would have rocked this, I would have right. rocked that. Like, you know, because it's not really about what you would bring. It's about what you would bring out of your team right. more so rather than... Oh, I would have brought catch-ons. I would have brought uniforms. Like, no, no, I ain't gonna say all that. Cause so you were more so like you want to be able to communicate a lot more. I'm big on communicating. Yeah. Like you learn that in nursing though. Yeah. Because without communication, everything fails. Right. Exactly. And I feel like you know, that's a big thing. And I feel like not just communication, but to understand that no one person is right about everything is a right. very big deal. Like. If you make a decision without talking to your team and your team feels a way about it, but you just feel like, oh, I'm the person in charge, you probably shouldn't be the person in charge because it should be more of a democracy. Like, okay, y'all, let's, these are the ideas we have. Now let's take a vote, and then we're going to report it to the people over us to see if we can get it approved. Right. Like, you know, I feel like that is how a team should be structured, mm-hmm. but without, I feel like the respect should be, on both ends right. and I feel like I would have brought that to the table so yeah I, <laughs> I think that's what's important creating you have to create a creative environment like yeah. I feel like in 2017 we were so creative because that's the environment that we had you mm-hmm. know Danny wasn't like you know but this is how I wanted and that's it it was more so like everybody bring in catch-ons and even if you know you bring in one that we don't like we can tweak it right exactly and I feel like that's what's important mm-hmm Yep. So, what is something that you'll miss about being a dancing dog? Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that's it. I'm not really big on like the makeup, yeah. clearly, and um, the hair, the weave, and stuff. Like you know, so that stuff you know can will come and go. I mean, I could put that on any day. Right. The uniforms are cute, but it's just like. You kind of grow up. You kind of grow out of it. Like, yeah. you feel like, dang, I'm not too old to be putting on uniforms every weekend. Yeah. Like, so that's okay. But I feel like I'm going to miss the dancing. I'm for sure going to miss the bond that I've had with my craft sisters. Because we still love each other. But when you get older and you go your separate ways, you get different jobs, you live in different states, yeah. it's kind of hard to keep that same connection. I'm going to miss my craft sisters. Um, I'm going to miss dancing because even dancing in the professional world is not the same as dancing on dolls. Right. Like dolls, it's just in a, it's a less judgmental environment once you make the team. Right. On the outside, the fans are pretty judgmental, but inside the doll room, we're pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just going to miss that vibe. I'm going to miss having little sisters to talk to whenever they need that, which, I mean, I know they can still talk to me anytime, but it's different when you're in the room. Right. And you see somebody going through something and you're able to just be there for them. Like, I want to miss all of that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but mainly the dancing, those field shows and the catch ons, you know. I'm going to miss that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is some advice that you can give to the next generation of dancing dogs? Don't let it change who you are, don't let the comments change your style. Don't let the negativity get to you. Um, Just be who you are, like, and just keep pushing. Like, no matter what the circumstances are, stay. Don't be like me and leave. Don't let your pain make you be impulsive and let go of things that you know that you need to finish. But mainly, don't let it change you. Yeah. So, other than the dancing dolls, what other teams do you watch in the HBCU world? Um, I watch the Stingettes, of course, because I love Jada. 
I love, love, love her. I don't know yes. if it's a two five one thing, but I just love watching her. I love Janae too though. Yeah. Like that their team was definitely a bomb team. I watched the J sets because I love Kayla. Yes. <laughs> and I love Joy. Um, sometimes I watch All Corn. Wait, wait, I wanna make sure I say it right. I think it's all corn. Yeah, I think it's all corn. It's all corn. I know they was telling me all corn. You gotta say it <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes I watch them. Sometimes I don't. It really just depends. I don't really watch videos as much anymore, though. Like yeah. I'm more so like on the adult side of life. You yeah. know, trying to survive and get through school. I spend most of my time doing school work, so I don't really watch videos. But if I were to watch videos. Dolls would be first, but I like to watch older doll videos before I was on the team. Because yeah. it's kind of sort of like a reminisce thing. Like, before I made it, that's what I watched. Yeah. And sometimes I watch things, yes, but if I watch them, it's not me typing it in into YouTube. It's more it so like you know, Instagram, and it's just like, oh, that looks good. Right. So, yeah. But other than that, oh, I love the, what are their, what's the NCA and T team? What are their Ooh. names? <laughs> I love them. I love them. I find They're bomb. It. I They're find bomb. It. I watch them also. I actually watch, put them up on YouTube because yeah. I just like them. Like I just like the fact that you really don't hear much about them. Yeah. Like they just do their stuff and they just, you know, stay out of you know the drama. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So what's next for Miss Jordan? Nursing, of course. Um, I've already accepted a job. Okay. Um. So. I think I'm going to spend a year to just get experience, and I want to move to California and just see where life takes me. I do have things planned, but, you know, when you plan things, you really don't want to say too yeah. much about it. You yeah. just want to do it. So, I don't really want to talk too much about what I have planned, but I do have things planned, and I'm not necessarily done dancing. We'll just see how much I'd like it or do it. <laughs> but I won't just say f dance we'll just right. see right. so my plans are we'll see right. okay <laughs> but well, my I, career is first yes yes definitely but i want to thank you so much you've done such an amazing job oh my god you thank taught you. so many different girls I, i'm pretty sure you're an inspiration to so many different girls so <laughs> yeah well thank you so much thank you for you know giving me the chance to do this interview you're um welcome. And I saw the video you did. It was so nice. <laughs> Thank and you. I usually don't like watching stuff like that because it's just like, oh, right. ugh, yeah. you know. But it was so nice. So thank you for putting so much positive energy into the HBCU dance world Thank because you. it's so much, you know, negativity it in is. it right now. It so is. I appreciate the fact that you can be fans of more than one person, right. basically. Right. So right. that is how it should be because we're a team at the end of the day. Yes. Yes. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good job. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.